Good morning, and thank you for listening to Winds of Praise Broadcasting. This is KWPBLP Newport. What a wonderful song that is. Talking to Jesus. Whoa, 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 whoa. (laughs) That's Elevation Worship. And I'm in the studio. We've got a lot of people here. This is awesome. Uh, You're listening to Winds of Praise, KWPBLP Newport. This is Scott Albright. And how do I say hello to everybody? And, And Ernie's not even here yet. But Colleen, I'm looking right at you. Good morning, Colleen. Well, good morning, Scott. And Mike Harden. Good morning. We've got Mike's position around the place. Uh, Rob Dupra. Good morning. And Mickey Harden. Good morning. Sitting next to me. And uh, we're expecting to have Ernie Mokwin come in. He'll probably be banging through the door pretty soon. But we're here to pray, and we want to make sure that you think about Jesus, not only think about him, but you embrace Jesus. You welcome and receive him because his benefits are awesome. He just he he gives life. His glory never ends. He promises eternal life. And we love him so. And we open the mics to pray for you and to encourage you to turn to Jesus. Just like that song said, what a friend we have in Jesus. Right? In fact, actually this morning as I was getting ready to come uh, to the studio, I was thinking and laughing at myself um, several years in a row when we were out of work and it would become Christmas time. I mean, I just seemed to be, I mean, so fixated on wanting to have wonderful gifts that could be in pretty boxes with pretty ribbons and, you know, all of that sort of thing. And during that period of time, Jesus was trying to get it across to me, Colleen, you're you're focused on the gifts that go inside of boxes with, you know, pretty ribbons, but I have gifts, um, just the gift of myself, my presence, and I'd like to share my love, my joy, my peace, my patience, my kindness, my gentleness, and my self-control with you. And at first, I was such you know I mean such a ninny I just didn't get the picture and finally it's like the other day I was just you know telling Jesus I said wow I mean the best 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 gifts of all that come from him don't fit inside of a box with like pretty ribbons it's like I mean you can't you can't put love inside of just a little box and so it's like Jesus right now just as we think about who you are and the tremendous tremendous price that you paid on the cross to forgive my sins yesterday today and tomorrow and the things that you have forgiven yesterday if I were to bring them up you'd go huh what, what are you talking about because you completely forget them you never bring them back up again and so jesus i just want to say thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you you're listening to winds of praise and this is scott and that was colleen um on sunday at our little church in sluts we did communion and i <clears throat> there weren't very many people there we've had a kind of a wave of sickness go through our congregation and people are recovering and we're trusting in the blood of jesus but I wanted to uh, serve communion, and we did. And I also said, if you're at home, you could also take communion with us. And even if you're at home right now, um, you could do that. You could go and find some juice, you could find some bread, and you could participate with us because, Colleen, you brought some elements this morning, and they're actually the same elements that we used on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really matter the the type that you have. It's not a specific bread or a specific juice or or wine as the bible says but you could take some you could take it with us hi ernie ernie came in we knew you would (laughs) (laughs) good morning and uh so we're gonna we're gonna take communion together over the air because we are participating in the death the resurrection the life of jesus christ right amen so all you guys are ministers what do we do Guess what I read this morning, too? What? I just, the Lord had me read through the whole crucifixion this morning. I read, it was in Matthew. So you're ready, the whole... Ernie? Isn't that amazing? Amen. Amen. So Amen. what we're doing does, is... Does that, mean, does that mean the gift that he sent to us of the Holy Spirit 
Does that mean that he's alive and well? It's the most awesome gift on the entire Maybe planet. The greatest gift to me. Yeah. And so we've got little wafers here. It's a kind of a neat invention, whoever invented this, put the little wafer on top of the cup. I recently took part in a, a communion in which they had bread all pulled apart in one basket, and then you take the bread and someone was holding a cup, and you dip the bread in the cup, and then you go back to your seat. And I thought that was a pretty neat way. So there's all sorts of different ways to do this, but the main thing is Jesus said to remember me when you eat, when you sit down, and when you take the bread, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone want to take it from there? So I, yeah. I'd like to interject there for a second. Okay. Just, just what you said right there spoke very deeply to my heart. Yeah. Let's celebrate what we have in common with our brothers in Christ, Amen. not our differences. So if someone dips the bread in the cup and they celebrate in that manner, they're still celebrating our Savior. Yeah, they're right. still celebrating that's Christ. Right. That's right. So that, that, I think, is the thing that we need today of all days to start bringing forward. All the congregations are celebrating Christ. The authority he has, the healing in his name that comes around, the mercy and the grace that he provides, that's what we're celebrating. Right. Not the difference. It doesn't matter what day we go to church. It matters that we go to church. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think the exciting part, just even as we hold up the little wafer to like look at it and to realize, I mean, I think of like, I look out and I see the sunrise is getting to come, beginning to come up and I can see the pink and, and I can see the beautiful clouds and, and just over the horizon, the beautiful Pacific Ocean and then all of the trees and the birds and all of the beautiful things that God spoke all of those things into being but to give us forgiveness for mm -hmm. our sins yesterday, today and tomorrow mm -hmm. Jesus had to give his own life. He had to be separated from the Father for the very first time ever in existence. And so when I realize the price, the price, his body, and so I'm not sure who's doing the... Well, I just re want to remind you, if you have even a piece of bread at your home or maybe you have a bag of Doritos in your car, you know, yeah. <laughs> and you want to pull over or do it at, at a later time. Maybe today would be an important day. It's the 2-22-22 day. And uh, maybe today would be an important time that you do this in your family. But um, uh, yes, go ahead. There's a day, this is also a day within the Jewish calendar too. 2 22 I can't remember what it is. Well, I know that the, the, the Jewish year adds up to 22. It, it's the That's year 5782 in the Jewish calendar. Mm -hmm. So 5 and 7 is 12, 8 and 2 is 10, so that adds up to 22. Mm -hmm. Yes. I also feel that with communion, that since the pandemic has been ever present with us, that people have not taken communion as they normally would okay. because they feel they have to be in the group setting in the church. And Jesus said in his word to take this often, often in memory of me. And whether we're in the group or we're at home, it's important. It's important that we Amen to that. Uh, and even if you're just by yourself. Exactly. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. So that yes. Mike and Mickey Harden, uh, Mike spoke and then Mickey and then there's Ernie. Uh, Rob, since you haven't spoken, maybe you can lead us in this bread. <laughs> <Not really. laughs> Father, Lord God, we just thank you for who you are. Yeah, We thank you for what you've done, and as we take this bread, we remember what the cost was, Lord, that you gave your perfect life for us, yes. uh, the price for a bunch of sinners, Lord, and we just thank you for that, and we do this in memory of you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> then we have this little neat cup we can fold back and have some juice. Juice like substance, I think. 
Mm -hmm. You all got your juice ready? Mm -hmm. and, and this, of course, is uh, grape juice, and it represents the blood of Jesus. And that's the one thing that we I wanted to emphasize is the blood of Jesus. There, that is the remedy, folks. Mm -hmm. There, you know, that's the it. world will tell you all sorts of things. Do this, do that. They'll never talk about the blood of Jesus, and we can do that. We who are believers in Christ, we get to proclaim mm -hmm. from the mountaintops the Amen. blood of Jesus mm -hmm. is the remedy. He doesn't promise us that we will never get sick or have trouble or even be persecuted or even be put to death. He doesn't promise that that won't happen. Right. But his blood is the remedy. And even if those things happen, we're okay. Yeah. God is with us. He will never leave us. He gave his blood as the covenant, the new covenant that we partake in. And yeah. so we take the blood of Jesus right now yeah. symbolically Amen. by drinking the blood the Thank cup. You. And then when they all finished, they sang a song. I know. And it's recorded that they sang Psalms 119. Oh, really? And then that, I'd like to read just a couple quick verses out of it, oh, not God. the whole thing, because it's quite long. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will mm -hmm. praise thee uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous justice. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Amen. I know. Well, you know, it's interesting, too, because I just got through reading through the Book of Martyrs. And, you know, just, you know, Jesus never leaves us or forsakes us. You know, like you were just saying, Scott, none of us is guaranteed anything, you know. But we are promised and, and and we are <laughs> even though there's trouble around us there's not bombs dropping and you right. consider a place like the Middle East or you consider Russia right now and Ukraine, Ukraine yeah. they're under the threat of violence mm -hmm. um, well, I heard violence has already started and, in fact I, I hope that we can pray for them for the believers especially in Ukraine I've seen pictures of people on their knees together praying mm. Of, I've seen a picture of a, a grandmother type uh, on her belly learning how to use a machine gun. <laughs> you know, it's a real threat. And so, Father, right now, we lift yes. up the people in Ukraine. Yes. We lift right. up the people in Europe. We yes. lift up all those places, Lord, where you are the peace. And you can, you can prevent anything from happening. Nothing happens unless you would say, all right, there you go. Father, we pray that people would choose not to attack. We pray that people would choose not to hurt their neighbor. We yes. pray that your love would show itself to be strong and true. And Father, guide and direct those people. But we pray for peace. We pray yes. for the peace of Europe. We pray for the peace of America. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, as yes. you tell yes. us to pray for. Yes. God, reign and rule. You are the Savior, and your glory will never decrease. It will always increase. So That's right. have your way, but we pray for peace up upon this world in Jesus' name. And Father, we just want to thank you and praise you that as you know, we look around us, we just see absolute crazy confusion, mm -hmm. I mean, across the entire globe. And Father, we want to thank you and praise you that, Jesus, that you are not the spirit of confusion. Right. Thank you that you have given us the keys to uh, heaven and that we can bind the spirit of confusion That's right. That's across right. the right. face of thank this you, earth and that we can loose, uh, take the keys and unlock, loose clarity of mind yes. and mm -hmm. thinking so and speaking is. and thank understanding. Yes. And that, Father, that what the evil one means for evil. Father, we want to thank you and praise you right. that you just like the uh, celebration of Purim, I thank you and praise you that just like when Haman, he d was determined that he mm -hmm. was going to hang poor Mordecai yeah. on the gallows that he had gleefully built, mm -hmm. you know, to hang Mordecai. But Father, in your grace and your mercy, right. you turned the tables mm -hmm. and so um, instead Haman was hung on the gallows and so father we speak life and health and vitality across the face of this earth mm -hmm. and we just mm -hmm. thank you jesus that your kingdom would come mm -hmm. and your will would be done on mm -hmm. earth like it is in heaven in jesus name amen you know what else i love about that story is that you know so he was he was 
baiting the king and preparing all this stuff and he goes well king what should we do how do we honor this uh, great person thinking that it was going to and, he, and he just laid it out well we need the horse and the ring and the robe and we need to do all these things to honor this person yes. and it turned out to be <laughs> well and then what is you know so where the lord has had me lately you know the, you know and humbling ourselves the first shall be last and the last shall be first you know when we humble ourselves. And I was also reading where the Lord said, you know, don't seek the high places when you're invited somewhere, seek the low places. That's and, right. You know, I love living like that. I love just being humble and just let, of course, in our flesh, we all want the pat on the back and, you know, sure, I'd love to be Billy Graham, but mm -hmm. I'm not, you know. But anyway, <laughs> right. I just love that though. And you know, it's so opposite of the world, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How we, how can we get so much joy and peace and happiness by just being our regular selves and accepting, you know, whether we have a little or like Paul said, whether we have a little or a lot, you know, but um, but don't don't exalt ourselves. You know? and, and the Lord will give you the the strength and the yeah. ambition. And I'm I'm reading about right. the craftsmen who actually were given the ability from God to do the things that God told Moses to do, as far as building the tabernacle. Right. These right. these craftsmen. Who could create a, a candelabra, the menorah, out of a single talon of gold? I mean, mm -hmm. one piece. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. And and I was actually watching a worship thing from uh, IHOP Kansas City yesterday. They they have 24 hours a day worship, and you can turn on if you have the God Channel, and I do through the Roku player. You can watch them play, and mm -hmm. I was just delighted in watching them yesterday. And I saw a guy come in with his guitar and he he went through the whole routine you know sat down got himself comfortable and plugged himself in and a young guy mike <laughs> and and i'm just kind of watching <laughs> like me no yeah. no but the reason i say that is because you you have said and declared that it's the young people that have a knack for the technology you know he yes. knew what he was doing he was plugging it in but after a while they started playing and it it seems to be unscripted but i think someone's talking in their ear i'm not sure someone's directing that traffic but at one point he was cut loose to play and he was getting such a delight in it and i was getting such a delight in watching him and it was the same thing as if god would in to give the spirit of of uh ability to build something that god says to do he 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 gave this fellow the ability to play and this fellow was playing like unto the Lord, right. and you could see a smile on his face, and I, I could just sense the glory of God through him. He but was playing guitar for I, all things. I'm, I'm amazed every day when I sit down and read my scriptures, and I go back to Abraham, sitting down with a knife in his hand, carving a piece of wood, and saying, what is it that man is seeking here that they find comfort in this piece of wood that I know doesn't live. Right. Right. It does not live. And God takes that moment and puts into Abraham the wisdom of God and mm -hmm. says, follow me. Yeah. But then he turns around with the same person that's trying to take somebody to the gallow and he confounds them. I know. He totally turns their intellect against them, their right. manipulation. God turns it around on them and uses their own trap, their own snare yeah, right. against them. Because right. he's, he's made us all. And Ernie, the reason I bring that up is, you know, you, you uh, say it so well. It's God has designed each one of us for a reason. And when you're operating the way that God's designed you, there's just a joy. There's just yeah, an man. abandon. And, and maybe it would be, you know, someday right. the top of the pile. You know, mm -hmm. maybe not. And you're well, okay with that. But the two greatest questions in life are answered when we follow Jesus. Why am I here and what is my purpose? Right. And sometimes our purpose takes quite a long time to ultimately figure out. Right. But we all yeah. have foundational gifts. And, and for me, my foundational gift is encouragement. And my whole life is built <laughs> around that gift. I got, and I have other gifts too and talents. But, you know, so I would, you know, if you don't know, if you're listening and you don't know what your spiritual gift is, just ask the Lord. And it's usually something you're good at, or it's just a, a core part of your personality. Or that you love and, to do. And yeah, the other yeah. exciting thing about that is just like there are six of us here in this room right now, and each one of us, as we begin to see, you know, the other person, we see the gifts and talents and abilities that God right. has given to each of the others. So there'll be a confirmation that will come from within the body. Right. So it's right. not like you have to struggle, struggle to try to figure it out. I mean, God God uses others to help us know. And what does the devil use? He, he also uses people to accuse and condemn. 
right. and to assault you with words that are lies. Right. right. Well, that, the that word happens. accuse, the accuser, the condemner, um, that has the little fingerprints of the enemy, the liar, right. that if his little lips are moving, he's lying and, to and, you. And, and Jesus <laughs> said, I, I don't, I didn't come to condemn you. There's a, uh, his lips kind of you. are moving. I didn't come to condemn you because <laughs> you're already condemned. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, you're in a fallen state. I've come to save you. Right. I've come to, to be your savior. To be your healer. Well, and just think, just think about um, Jesus just walking along down the street and, and blind Bartimaeus. I mean, everybody's telling Bartimaeus, you know, basically shut up, be quiet. I mean, yeah. Jesus is on his way coming down the street here. Oh, but what does Jesus do? Jesus mm-hmm. stops right in front of him and says, what may I do for you? <laughs> and so it's like, you know, and what did he want? He wanted to be able to see. And so, Father, right now, we just think about that maybe perhaps someone listening today, maybe they're having failing eyesight. Maybe they are blind. But Jesus, thank you that just that you would say, what may I do for you? And you just restored that sight. So somebody who's hearing us, your sight That's is right. being restored just because Jesus Jesus loves you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to give authority to what she just said. I want to give authority to it. Because when Peter went to the temple and he preached Christ and he healed the man outside the temple that was seeking alms, then he turned right around and the congregations of Jerusalem and everywhere else laid their sick out in the streets on beds. Now remember what Jesus said. These things and more you will do in my name. They walked through the street. They weren't pronouncing anything. Their shadow fell upon the sick and they were healed. The demon possessed were set free. Somebody out there listening today is doubtful that this is going to happen in their life. Grab hold of that truth. This and much more God's going to do in your life. Period. Because of Jesus. That is the power. Jesus, Amen. Jesus is real. Jesus is yeah. real. Just like that song we played be- that, <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> what a friend we have in Jesus. What, what a friend. Yeah, well, I got something funny to say. So, you know, I'm, I'm wearing the same pants I was wearing yesterday. So, um, I couldn't help but think when the barn by a man, he probably didn't smell too good. So, I apologize right now. I smell like, I smell like a diesel mechanic. And I was like, oh my gosh. I, so I apologize. I mean, we're a close word. Yeah, well, it is my smell. <laughs> kind of like it about you, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Working man. I've been like diesel half my life. Yeah, so I, know, I think uh, it smells good. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a story. So I, I was in a. You, most of you guys, you, know, you remember the old fashioned carburetor cleaner? Mm-hmm. Super powerful. I mean, I would even wear gloves. And I just got through rebuilding a couple carburetors that day. And that stuff sticks on you like ammonia. It's, it's really horrible. I don't even like it. And I was in a grocery store one night, and I actually stayed back because I just like I don't realize it till I get it like in closed quarters or or when I'm in a dip, different. So I'm in the store going, oh man, I really smell pretty bad. I've really reeked of this carburetor cleaner. And so I'm standing in line, uh, and I was you know about three or four. Way, this is way before COVID, but I was giving her six feet, you know. <laughs> and this poor this sweet old lady in front of me started crying. And I looked at her and I said, oh, man, because she was looking at me and she started crying. I'm like, oh, Lord, really? You know? And I just applied. I said, ma'am, I am so sorry. I, you know, I know I smell horrible right now. And she goes, oh, no. Please. She walked right up to me and put her hand on me. She goes, please don't apologize. She goes, my dad, and this was an old lady. She goes, my dad was a mechanic. Right. And he used to come home smelling smell. like that all the time. Yeah. And and she was just crying. She goes, thank you. I said, it so reminded me of my father, you know, and I just almost started crying right there at the store. And that's so the, I don't apologize for smelling the bad part of the time, the, but isn't that a neat story, though? God, God loves every single person, and right. he's reached us, the right. six in this room, in a unique, special way, and he will reach you in the way that he knows how to reach you. Yeah. He loves you. Right. He knows you. We don't. Yeah. But God does. So even when we're embarrassed or we're thinking, you know, oh my gosh, I'm just out of place, you know, God will use right. whatever. And of course, I got to share the Lord with her. She, <laughs> she was, uh, she was a believer, you know. But it was just, it was such That's a beautiful awesome. moment. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm moved right now by by that because something Colleen said when I came in here, and that's for me what it says is 
we have to step into that moment when we're being led because right, we're right. going to bring something to somebody. Colleen, share with us about the arrows being fired into the ground, the oh. part that you were talking about this morning about not completing. Well, um, the story about El Elisha, um, he actually was um, basically kind of like on his deathbed, and he was talking to King and um, starts with a J. Um, what is it? Jehoshaphat. No, Joaz, I Joaz. think it is. Joaz. Anyway, so anyway, he's talking to him, and he actually gets out of his his sick bed, and he goes to the king, and he he actually helps the king to hold the bow and the arrow, and he brings it back and helps him to shoot the arrow out the east window. So I mean, that's very very successful. Then Elijah gives him you know, several arrows that are in his hand, and he's told to strike them on the ground. But the king, you know, the king just kind of goes tap, tap, tap. I mean, Elisha gets just really, really upset. I mean, really angry, because it was he was just being half-hearted about what he was doing, and Elisha was <coughs> telling him that if he would have fervently struck the arrows you know strike 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 that then the battle would have been won and so it's like you know we we don't want to be kind of like halfway I call them halfway Herberts that just do things <laughs> halfway and it's because like when we look at Saul Saul did lots of things right but he mm. just did it halfway he he let the king live. He kept some of the sheep. You know, he, you know, he just didn't do the whole thing correctly. So, Father, right now, just as we think about who we are, we want to be fervent about the walk that we have with you and that when you tell us to strike the arrows on the ground, that we wouldn't just do tap, tap, tap that we would strike them fervently over and over and over and over again. And Amen. that we Amen. want that the Amen. battle would be won because we would be obedient to what you're saying, not halfway, but be obedient in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. And why that bring this up is I'm going to give you a story about Lincoln City, your neighbors, mm -hmm. okay? We are, we, Mickey and I go around to many churches and present the Lord in song or in message. And then one church we were attending, the Lord gave me a message to share with a young man. And then now I understand I can go into the history of the young man, but he's, needless to say, he's in a wheelchair and has a very difficult time speaking. And the Lord wants him to be healed. And I, and I said to him, when the voice of the Lord comes on your heart, respond. Do, do it. Don't hesitate. This man's been in the wheelchair how many years now, Mickey? Long time. This last month, he's sent, he has stood up and taken consecutively 22 times. He has got up out of his wheelchair and walked a couple of steps. Wow. And he is, he is recovering. And it's because the Lord has told him to do it. He's responding. He's not holding back. He is, get, he is getting stronger in his legs, his lower back, and he was told he was not going to ever walk. And he is now moving forward with the Holy Spirit. He's doing it boldly. He's not doing it half-heartedly. <clears throat> when it comes upon him, he goes to the length, of, the nth of his ability. He's shooting those arrows into the ground. He's taking absolute authority in what God's given him. In fact, Mike, I love, like, as you're telling that story, I'm thinking about years ago there was a Christian bookstore here in town. And so, anyway, I was in the Christian bookstore, and there was a lady that I knew, and she was, she was like, just, I mean, her back was really hurting her. And she mentioned to me how her back was just killing her. You know, and, and I could, you know, I sort of, I was feeling like sorry that it was, you know, hurting. All of a sudden, the Lord said, well, Colleen, you know, you could, you know, like pray for her back, you know, and I thought, oh, that's a really good idea, Lord. <laughs> and so anyway, I just laid my hand on her shoulder and I just said, in the name of Jesus and the blood of Christ, might your back be healed. And so 
I mean, I didn't feel anything. She didn't seem to feel anything. I mean, I, I just didn't see any big anything that happened right there. But shortly after that, my husband and I had gone out for lunch, and her mom came into uh, the restaurant and rushed right over to the table. And she had just gotten a phone call from her daughter who had been completely healed. Mm, and so when God tells you to do something, just plain do it. Do it right. Amen. Amen. Well, speaking of that, <clears throat> yes. the Lord just brought to mind this sweet sister <clears throat> was in a wheelchair. I don't remember, but she's, she can't move. She's like a quadriplegic. She can't talk. But when she was in church, this is when we were in the big church, and God just put her on my heart. We need to pray for her. And I just yeah. believed with my whole heart for years that God was going to heal her. And, you know, Pastor Lonnie would be doing a message, and, and she'd cry out to the Lord, you know. And I, I even wrote her a poem, and but I haven't thought about her in a while, and I feel bad. Pray. because So let's pray for her. So, Father, right now, we just lift Valerie up to you. Yeah. And, Lord, that beautiful she's got that beautiful hair, Mexican little girl, Lord, mm -hmm. and she's probably in her 30s right now. But, Lord, I just still believe with my whole heart that you want to heal her in the here and now. Not, and I know she'll be ultimately healed in heaven. But, Father, I just we just pray Thank right you. now. We come together in agreement um, for the things that are binding her to that wheelchair, that they would be loosened, Lord, and you would set her free, and, and her testimony would go. That's what you've put on my heart. Your, her testimony will go throughout Amen. the entire world, Lord. Yes. So I just thank you for Valerie and her mom and continue to give them strength. And Lord, I'm excited to see how you're going to handle this situation. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Jesus, we're so excited for Valerie. We just want to That's thank right. you and praise you that Jesus, you desire for Valerie to be whole yes, and complete. Thank you, so Glory we thank you and praise you that you would you. make her Jesus every bit whole. Yes. Amen. Amen. May this be the day, Lord, that people get out of their wheelchairs. Yes. Lord. The yes, young man Lord. that Mike just talked about, yes. 22 times he's gotten up. And what is today? Amen. 2, 22, <laughs> 22. Right. Oh, and lovely. Lord, how many people are in chairs waiting who have heard the word of the Lord that you are healed? Right. Maybe this this be the day that they rise up in the strength that you give them by the strength and the power of the blood of Jesus. And Lord, over the people uh, who may lack vision and who need healing on their eyes, as Colleen has declared earlier, let that happen today. Yes. And let weak backs be strengthened father Amen. whatever illnesses are out there right now we come against we plead the remedy which is the blood of jesus the blood of the lamb given once for all for eternity it's done it is done mm -hmm. so i want to reiterate there were 70 that followed christ and before he put the authority upon the disciples he sent them out and they came back amazed that in the name of Jesus, That's right. there were demons sent away. Yes. There was healing. Don't forget the centurion. He said, I'm a man of authority, and you are a man of authority. You don't have to put your hands on anybody. Right. And in Jesus' name, <laughs> we send this healing out over these radio waves Amen. today. Well, and who was the guy that um, Jesus, he came to Jesus for help, and Jesus said, you have to have faith, but the man said... You know, I need help with my faith. I need you. So, my so if there's anybody Amen. listening that right. just just ask if even if you your faith is weak, as long as it's a mustard seed, it's enough. But Amen. ask the Lord to increase your faith. Amen. And just as we took communion, it's like. You know, whether it's like uh, the Lord uses each one of us to cast out a demon, to heal someone sick, to raise them from the deathbed, whatever it is, the biggest thing ever is that our name is written in the Lamb's Ooh. Book of Life. Yeah, that's right. And we are praising Amen. Jesus Christ for our salvation. Yep. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. And I, just, <laughs> I would like to add to that. Colleen had mentioned that you never know really when God's going to have you strike those arrows. Right. I was, Mike and I were in Costco and we were shopping over in the valley and a lady was coming towards me in an aisle. She had her basket, I had mine, and she's, we were masked, but she came up to me and she said, you have happy eyes. And the Lord told me this morning when I saw the first pair of happy eyes, I was to come up and say, God bless you. We started talking and before you know it, we had like seven or eight women in our midst and we had a prayer meeting right there <laughs> in the Costco. aisle of Costco. Church broke yes. out. Now you talk about <laughs> yes, arrows. Right. Yeah. When you encounter the opportunity, you smash those arrows down, you lift 
Jesus higher. Amen. And right there, you're going to have that latter rain fall upon you, and you'll be worshiping. I mean, and the um, the clerks and all the busy people around us, they just worked around us. They didn't ask us to leave. And we were there for about 15 minutes. Amen. Praise the Lord. And our hands were up. I mean, this one wife, she went to her husband and said, Honey, I just attended a, a prayer meeting. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right Thank here in you. Costco. For two and or it more was gathered. wonderful. Yeah. So you never know when God's going to open the opportunity for you to strike those arrows and strike Amen. them hard. Amen. Yes. Yes. Well, if you're listening, this is Winds of Praise Broadcasting. I'll give my phone as a contact. It's 541 270 7855 you can text or call and i can put you in touch that you just listened to mickey harden uh, mike harden is here with her uh, together they're ministers of the lord colleen mcneil is here ernie moquin and rob dupra and, and scott albright rob you've been awful quiet but that's okay these things happen these things happen <laughs> we're going to You've already got me in trouble. We're way past our half hour. So. Uh oh. You know, I'm, I'm being. I want to say one more thing. <laughs> so, 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 so the Bible says where two or more are gathered, yes. you know, Jesus is in the midst. Yes. But I want to tell you, if you're by yourself, you're with the Father, the Son, and the oh, Holy Spirit. God. So there's four of you right there, even when you're alone. Yes. So He's right in the midst, even if you're by yourself. That's All right. Amen. Amen. Ernie, Amen. close us. Take us out, please. All right, folks. You know what I'm going to say next? Go out there and give him heaven. Amen. Amen. <laughs>